then uh, when you're option clicking in the background, that allows you to pan. So when you click off, it's deselected. All right, in the middle there, those transform controls, what those allow you to do is move it. So those arrows, um, what what is the green arrow called? What axis is that on? Yeah, that's the Y axis. Red is X axis and our Z, our Z well, sorry, our Z axis is going to be our blue, which means it's going to move us forward and backward. Okay. Um, cause we are working with depth now. We're not no longer just working in two dimensional. Yeah. Doesn't want to open. Okay. Um, so you guys, you see those little boxes that are underneath or to the left and right of the arrows. Go ahead and click and drag on those. Yeah. See if there's like a red, green, Okay. All right. So those, like that green box, for example, should allow you to stretch this thing out. All right. So I'm just gonna zoom out here. So this is how, if I was gonna make like a building or something, this is how I would do it. All right. I can stretch it down. And tomorrow, one of the things we'll probably talk about is how to add like textures and images on there. Feeling for? Oh, it's up here. Oh. I, I did find the other tripod. It was in the. It was in there. Set up. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I checked it out. I'm thinking maybe Joe Bolbot has it, but I, I never wrote it down if I checked it out. Seven. So. And not everybody's here today either, so. Okay. All right. So, and again, you can stretch out stuff. You can make the whole thing larger one piece at a time. Also, guys, take a quick look up here. If I hold down shift and I click on green red, blue, and then go to my circle, then it's going to scale that whole thing up as a whole. Okay. Now it won't let me move it at this point though. Okay. So if I click on an arrow and then I go back to that circle, now I can move it around without it getting changed in size. So again, to scale up an entire thing, so it doesn't get disproportionate, hold down shift green, red, blue, or any order really. And then that will blow that thing up. Okay. So let's go ahead and I want you guys to add a couple more shapes here. Just kind of set up like a mini like scene. Even though we're probably going to do something more similar to this tomorrow. I just want to do a little test run of it. So set up a couple objects here and manipulate them. Also, if you click on an object, say like this building looking thing, and I go Command C, Command V, I made a duplicate of it and then I can just pull that one out. Command C, Command B. Always scales it instead of F. Okay, click on uh, like it's it doesn't move it. Yeah, if you click on the arrow and then it'll like deslide, it'll reselect your option or reset it rather. So command C, command V while selecting on an object, copies it and pastes it. Yep. Um an object. You guys can do it by clicking on those arrows. Or if you click on an arrow and then click on the middle, it'll that'll allow you to move it as well. <laughs> uh, the other thing you can do is you guys see those little like circles? They're going around it. That'll allow you to rotate objects. Okay, so one of the things you are able to do in this program that we're not necessarily going to do this year is you can build like things in here. Like you could build like you know characters or. Um, you know, weapons or whatever. But everything in this program is pretty much basic shapes that you can then manipulate. How many people have worked with sculptures before with me when we did like the sculptures? Okay, um, you could potentially take one of those sculptures and bring it into this program. And then in this program, you could add a bone structure to it and then have it walk and move. So that's something we're gonna do in uh, video animation this year. This program? I don't know, I'm not sure. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I know a lot of these programs are for both. Like sculptures is for both. So yeah. this one might be for both. Look it up. Look on Google. See if uh, Cheetah 3 is for a PC. All right. Once you get a couple objects in there, we're also going to put a plane in. Okay. A plane is essentially just ground. Okay. So go up to Polygon. Go to Plane. 
right? And then you're gonna have to probably move it out because you won't be able to see it. And then what I want you to do is make it larger so that it kind of sets a floor space for all your objects. Oops. Elias, you did uh, you did the walk cycle with us, didn't you? Yeah, in studio. You didn't? Oh, okay, I wasn't sure. All right, so there you go. Just got like you know a couple structures, and you can see some of them are dipping underneath. That's not a big deal as long as you don't care. If, like you know, if you go underneath that, that you show it. But like I said, there is a lot more you can do to this. Like. I could potentially click on these things and I could subdivide stuff and like I could totally pull these things apart and make them into really unique shapes. This is something we're not going to, again, we're not going to do this this year where you can make more, you know, interesting things. Is this hard? Just like pan around. Without um not really. Uh you can use this to go sideways. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, how do you yeah, yeah. That you guys uh yeah, because so you can move around in circles by holding down option click, but if you wanted to go straight or up and down, what you have to use the are these crosshairs here, the move camera. So that would go up and down and then we go side to side. So just a heads up on that. That's that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. All right, now, everybody, kind of just get your scene set up. Does everybody have a floor? That is good. All right, even though it's a bunch of random objects, doesn't matter what it is. The big thing is now that we learn how to control the camera movement, and that we have like our camera move through the scene. Whatever it is, however simple it is, doesn't matter. A couple objects is fine. Okay. So, everybody go down to the bottom left. By the way, before we even go there, you guys kind of see how all these objects are just kind of sitting there. And this is just functioning similar to Photoshop with layers. Okay, Big one, though, that you want to notice is your camera. All right, Camera is exactly what we're seeing right now. Okay, And I know that because you see in the top left here, it says camera view. And you can change that. So, there's perspective view. And the big thing about perspective view is, what do you guys think this is? That thing? Anybody know what that is? That thing floating out there? That's actually your camera. So this is another way to actually control your cameras. You could go into a different view and then say, one of the things we'll talk about is this little thing. You guys see that black square up top? Hit that. All right. Now, I'm going to set this right view to camera. So this is exactly what my camera is seeing, but this is actually my perspective view where I can actually manipulate the camera. So you see how I can actually control it to make it uh, move in or rotate, and then I get a good idea of really what I'm making. So this is kind of like, you know, we've already done a lot of stuff with filmmaking. Now you're talking about filmmaking, but you're controlling the angles within a program. So again, if you guys want to do that, that is your uh, quad view slash single view changer right here. So if you hit that, and then what you do is you click on each one and you can set it. So this one has perspective view set to it, while this one has camera view set to it. Okay, we're actually going to stay on camera view though. So make sure you guys go back to single view and go just camera. Because we're just going to learn how to do the camera first. All right, now everybody, bottom left side. Okay, you guys see where I'm at? Down by that play and record button. All right, I need you guys to turn on three new options, okay? You're going to turn on the P, which is your key all, all parameters. You're going to turn on your auto keying, which auto keying, I believe, only works with uh, objects, not the camera. And then the next one, which is your key hierarchy. So just click on that. Don't turn on the cell phone signal looking thing says what only key change parameters don't turn that on 
Okay, so all the other ones should be on, but the cell phone signal should be dark. Ready with me? Because if you guys don't do this right now, it's not going to work, the next part. So make sure that you have all that cell phone highlighted in blue except for the cell phone signal. All right, next thing. Everybody, make sure you click on your camera now. Okay, over here on, on your object browser. Camera has to be selected. If you're on anything else, it's not going to work because you're not actually recording the camera movements. Okay, now, this is your timeline down at the bottom. Okay, you can see I have a play ad. So this is at 0, 10 frames, 20, okay? Um, you can see here, I only can see 40 frames. If I want to see more, I can grab the end of that dark gray line at the bottom and I can drag that out. And you can get up to 100. All right, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to put my play at cell 1, all right, keyframe 1, and I'm going to start where I want my, my camera to be. So I want it to be kind of panned out here and maybe above. So that's going to be my first shot of this scene. And I'm going to hit the record button. Then I'm going to move my play head maybe to like 10 or about where 10 should be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start zooming in. And get my camera in a new position and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit that red record button there and what you should see happen is you get these blue lines and those are just your keyframes okay, those are whatever camera movement you've done because we did click on camera so now when I hit play on this it's gonna slowly zoom in well actually it's fairly fast if I wanted that to last longer like happen over a longer course of time I can literally click any of these keyframes and drag them out and move them so now I just move that to 30 okay let's go ahead and hit play much slower pan in or zoom in. All right, and then go ahead and stop. To stop it, unfortunately, you have to hit the play button. I don't think there's another, yeah, I don't think there's a hotkey set up. All right, and then now I'm gonna go to, let's say 50, and I'm gonna zoom through a little bit more, but I'm also gonna have my camera start moving around. All right, and then go ahead and hit record again. All right, so here's what I want you guys to do. Get your camera keyframed moving through your scene. And just by hitting record, make sure, again, your camera is being selected. You have those essential things turned on down here for your recording. And that you basically need to position yourself, your camera, then hit record. Okay, so when I hit this play now, you see my camera go ahead, zoom in, and then start panning around. Right, and if it doesn't do what you want it to, you might need to make some in-between frames. So if here it gets kind of out of whack, I'll change it up, see what that looks like. Add a frame in between too. And you literally need to tell it to do everything. So if you want it to, to not zoom in too much, then don't have it. You know, if, it, if you want it to zoom in and then slowly go to the left, you, you're like, you know, stop and then go to the left. You need to make sure you tell it that.